In this video, you'll learn how to set up your blender scopes and what brushes I use to guarantee the best results possible. These settings and brushes almost never change, so if you're just getting into sculpting or you want to make sure you're doing it right, this video is for you. If you have any more questions, just put them in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them. Okay, let's get into it. I always start off of a sphere. You can probably also use a cube and apply a few subdivision levels on it. But what I usually do is I use a sphere just because it's immediately, you know, round and I don't really have to apply any subdivisions or whatever. So then what I, once I have that, we can go into the sculpting tab. There's nothing we have to set in here. We can just switch from the layout tab up here to the sculpting tab and then we have a different layout. These are custom layouts. One window down here is basically for the sculpt to have a different perspective that is the camera perspective down here then i have my work window my 3d 3d window and then i also have one more window for something else like a reference image we could put that in there as reference or i could change that to shaders or whatever i need so this one is basically just uh, pretty open to whatever i need um i mainly use it for stuff like references the brush settings don't really matter that much um, I guess the only really setting that I change in terms of the brush settings in the beginning would be this setting right here. In the radius setting, there's this pressure size pressure setting. I use a graphics tablet, which is first of all, I guess more intuitive for me because it's similar to drawing and I can, you know, just draw on, on this uh, sphere. I don't really use a mouse, I use a graphics tablet. And the graphics tablet has one more aspect to it, which is pressure sensitivity. So I can decide how much pressure I want to apply to the, the the pad or the pen, which means also that I will create more strength or I apply more strength to the brush that I currently use in Blender, which is the strength setting right here. If you have it highlighted in blue, this icon right here, then the pressure sensitivity is applied. I don't want to have it on the radius though. If I have it on the radius, this cursor circle that is right now displayed is not uh, accurate anymore, which means if I keep it applied, it could be, you know, I want to readjust the size of my cursor, but then if I have the radius applied and I don't apply enough pressure, it actually paints in less than what you can see as the cursor right now. So what I usually just do is I just deactivate it. There you go. So those are the settings for the clay strips brush, I guess. These aren't important just yet. We're going to go over them in a minute. What I want to do first is the general settings. The general settings um, mean stuff like dynamic topology. Of course, dynamic topology is, of course, if you want to shape this into a character, you can't really just work with the sphere. It'll be very stretchy. It'll be very hard to really create a full face. So what you need is dynamic topology. Dynamic topology basically retopologizes where you sculpt. So this is the basic sphere topology. If I now paint on here, you can see it changes the geometry. It basically retopologizes it so that you can change the shape into whatever you need. This way you can create like a full body without um, stretching out the geometry too much, too much because there's gotta be new geometry that you basically stretch out or add to the sphere. I don't use the relative detail though. Relative detail might be a little bit more easy to understand in the beginning, but in my opinion, relative detail is contradictory to how the sculpting workflow, at least that I work with, it is contradictory to that. Relative detail basically means the further away you are from a model, the lower the resolution of the geometry that you add to the sphere, the closer you are the more resolution there. See how much more resolution this is. If I go further, you can see it's way bigger. If I even paint over this high resolution blob right here, it's just gonna remove it again. So the further you are away from the actual scope that you're sculpting on, the, the lower the resolution is. Um, I don't like the setting because if you, for example, go in here and put in a crease right here and then you decide, oh, I want to actually adjust this part right here. Then you go in here, you go a little bit further away because you want to see more of the sculpt. Okay, let's, let's adjust it and oh, the detail is gone again. <laughs> How bad? <laughs> would be a shame if there would be an option where this doesn't really happen. This um, detailing method for dynamic topology basically has the strategy in mind or put in as much detail as you need whenever you need it. I like it more to set it to constant detail. Constant detail have basically has the idea, no matter from where you sculpt, always apply the same resolution to this geometry. Right now it's hit three. I usually start with 20. That is, in my opinion, a good geometry resolution to start. Now you can see it is immediately more than what we had before. The good thing about this one is you don't need to be close to the sculpt to add uh, this level of detail. 
you can be very, very far away and you still add the exact same amount of detail to the sculpt. The way I work is to start off very rough with a low resolution and then add more and more resolution, basically increase the dynamic topology resolution higher and higher to add more and more detail, which is basically the workflow that I follow from very rough to very detailed. And that is also what the constant detail workflow basically is, or the constant detail, I guess, the strategy, because you can just increase more and more and more the resolution. So those are the settings that I use for dynamic topology. We also need one more setting ticked, which is the symmetry. Of course, if you do a face, usually faces are very symmetrical. They have slight asymmetries, but it is usually better to start off with a symmetrical face. And then afterwards, once you're basically done with the face structure overall, then you can use a few brushes to push and pull to kind of give it some asymmetry once you are done with the face overall. So um, we apply symmetry as well. And those are basically all the settings that we need for now. I have basically five brushes that I use for all my sculpts. There's no exception. Those are all the sculpt, uh, all the brushes that I ever need, or maybe let's, let's say six. So the first one being the main sculpting tool, the clay strips brush. You can see it right here. The clay strips brush basically adds more volume, adds more geometry. Um, this is useful for you know like adding a nose to a character or going in, creating eyes. Um, that is the main tool that I use to create my my sculpts. You can not only use this to add, you know, general volume, you can also use this to create some structure or, you know, some, some texture by doing it like this. You can create some fur, for example. So it has multiple different ways or multiple different use cases where this clay strips brush is useful. There are a few more brushes that basically add more volume to the surface. But in my opinion, this, oh, hello, this one's the best one in terms of its usability. In my opinion, the clay strips brush is the most versatile one. The next one would be the complementary brush to the uh, clay strips brush. The next one would be the crease brush. The crease brush is basically a complementary to the clay strips brush in the sense that it creates a crease. That is very helpful if you want to detail some stuff, like um, you want to create some nice sharp edges on the eyebrows, for example, or on the eyelids. That's what you want to use this crease brush for. Or you want to dig into something you want to create a crease like a like a fold or a, a wrinkle yeah that's why you would use the crease brush every brush has a secondary function i don't even know if there's a clay strip oh yeah oh yeah of course the uh, every every brush has two ways to use it either you add volume or you remove volume the standard setting for the clay strip brush by not pressing anything except for applying the brush would be to add volume if you hold control and then you use the brush you remove the volume there are always two functions to every brush that also counts for the crease brush. You can either create a crease or you can create this sharp edge, this pinch as your secondary function while holding control. So this one is not holding control. This one is holding control. It is very, very, com I, I call it complementary to the clay strips brush just because it is kind of hard to create sharp edges with the, com with the clay strips brush. So one use case for the crease brush would, for example, be to create nice sharp edges over here, or maybe even create a nice sharp edge right there. That's um, one use case for the crease brush. Another one would be creating wrinkles or all sorts of other, other stuff. The next one would be number three, the grab brush, which is this icon right there. The grab brush is basically just there to adjust the shape or the sculpt in small ways, like pushing and pulling small portions of the sculpt like you want to move the eye a little bit lower. You want to move the nose a little bit higher. That's where you would use the grab brush. The grab brush, even if dynamic topology is enabled, will not change or retopologize the mesh. It will always keep out what we already have. There's another brush that I use that retopologize what we have. So the grab brush is basically just to kind of push and pull and adjust the uh, the sculpt itself. What, what happens if you press control? Gone, uh, nothing. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, th there's no control function on this. Then we have number four out of uh, six, which is the mask brush. The mask brush is basically there to create a mask and basically select vertices or parts of your sculpt that will not be affected by any other brushes. So if you now, for example, paint this surface black and then you switch to your clay strips brush, for example, and you wanna add more volume, you can see what happens. Everything will be affected except for this black part. You have a nice, you have a slight uh, gradient right here. That's why some of this will be affected. But you can see nothing on the inside of this black part, this you know marked part, will be affected. That is what the mask brush basically does. You create areas that will not be affected by any other brushes. 
The good thing about this one is that you can create ears very easily with this one. So you can first of all paint a, you know, a shape and then you can press Ctrl I to invert the shape so that you have what you've marked before will be changeable and everything else will not be changeable. And then you can, you know, change this part in here and everything else will stay the same or you can invert it again. And that's basically the mask brush. You can also, you know, add or remove. Add is by not holding control. If you hold control, you remove parts of this uh, selection. If you want to remove the whole mask, you can press control uh, alt M. There you go. And then was, there's the fifth brush that I use, which is the snake hook brush. The snake hook brush is similar to the grab brush, like this one, woo, except for that it adds or retopologizes the geometry. Similar to the clay strips brush, it basically adds more geometry, of course, depending on how high you've set the dynamic topology. Which means if I now grab this, you see how it adds more geometry right here? That is not the case with the grab brush. With the grab brush, what would happen if I do the same motion? Nothing. <laughs> so. It ha they have two different functions. The grab brush, I mean the um, snake hook brush is more used for extending the sculpt. Basically, for example, creating ears like this ooh, or horns, which you can't really do with the grab brush. It basically pulls out more geometry. It stretches it out. Um, the grab brush is more there to move and move, push and pull, not really to add more or extend the sculpt. We're gonna all use all these brushes in the in the workflow anyway. And then there's one more brush that is probably the second most important brush, I would say, or another complementary brush to the clay strips brush, which would be the smooth brush. You could either find it here in the selection, I think it's this one, yeah, or you can also, uh, doesn't matter which brush you use, you can also hold shift and then use the brush again and use smooth what you've previously added or removed with your brush. It doesn't matter if I have the clay strip selected, I have the crease brush selected, it doesn't matter which brush I use, if I hold shift, I will always switch to the smooth brush and can smooth out what I've uh, basically can smooth out the, the surface or the, the sculpt, which is especially helpful if you want to, you know, create a smooth surface. You want to create some, I don't know, frog eyes. There you go. We have some nice frog eyes. Oh, they're pretty, pretty rough looking. Let's use the smooth brush and make them smoother. So that's very, very, uh, a very quick way to smooth everything out. And those are basically all the brushes that I use. Let's go over them again, just quickly. Recap, we have the clay strips brush. We have the crease brush. We have the grab brush to kind of just pull and pull. We have the mask brush to exclude parts of the sculpt from any transformations. We have the snake hook brush to extend this, uh, the sculpt. And we have the smooth brush by holding shift while having any other brush. And that's basically all the brushes that you ever need. Everything else that you have here is just more, I guess, more niche. I've probably never used uh, this, 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 <laughs> this, uh, basically never. Maybe the crease, I mean, the pinch brush is useful sometimes, but everything else isn't really that necessary. You can basically create the same effect with the tools that I've showed you. And there you go. As I said before, if you have any more questions, just put them in the comments. This was actually recorded during a live stream. If you want to see even more content or you just want to hang out, chat, and maybe influence what topics we'll go over in the future, make sure to check out my live channel. The links will be in the description and in the top right corner of this video. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike and tell me in the comments what you want to see better done next time. I hope you have a great day. See ya.